Hello YouTube and welcome to a short video on flight planning from me, Simon. So, those of you pilots out there who are already up to speed on this stuff, hopefully this is a refresher. To some of you it will be new, whether you're a real world pilot, whether you're a simulator pilot. And I'll show you first of all a wonderful thing. It's an iPad. And running on there we've got um, Sky Demon, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with. Great tool, you can click away, you can draw a line straight into this program. So easy. It will give you a log. It takes all of the effort out of it. And we're going to put that away. Because we need to learn to do this from first principles. So, for this tutorial, we're going to need, first of all, a chart. CAA half million, one to five hundred chart there. We'll also use a ruler. We have our square protractor. We have some pens, um, a dry white marker, which hopefully will come in useful later, and a piece of tissue paper. That's what we need. So let's clear all this out of the way and get started. So today's flight we're going to um, pretend, plan, a flight from East Midlands Airport and East Midlands is here and we'll take ourselves on an imaginary flight to Fenland which is there so we're going to fly from here to here now in reality we'd not be able to take this route and coming out of East Midlands there are entry and exit procedures which would take us to the north or south initially so we'd be coming from a visual reference point um, most likely coming out to the north we'd fly perhaps to Trowell initially or going down to the south we wouldn't really be turning until we'd got clear of the Shepshed Lane to avoid the airspace but for today we'll just take a direct route so the first thing we'll do is get our ruler and we'll um, join these two points up with a line. There we go. One black line on our chart. Now looking at that line, we can see that it takes us quite close to a gliding site at Saltby. This is again probably not a clever route to fly in the real world. We'd want to have a very good look out there. But for the purposes of today again, we'll we'll accept that routing. We're also going to try and find a checkpoint somewhere sensible that we can check our position when we're in the air. Which is why we have a dry right marker here. Looking at the chart, there's the town of Melton Mowbray. There. And that would make a good checkpoint to see how we're progressing. Now this is an interesting thing. If you use a dry white marker on a permanent pen on chart, it comes off really rather nicely. And the reason I've read the line out, we don't need to have that line going through there all the time. In fact, I'm just going to alter that slightly. But we can put a gap into the chart to see what's happening. Let's tidy that up. Now that draws our attention once we're actually flying this leg that there is a checkpoint there. And the reason for the checkpoint will become slightly more obvious soon. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two extra lines, one either side of track. Now these are going to be 10 degree drift lines, so I'll need the protractor. Easy for me to say. So we have two drift lines now. So let's just review what we've done so far. We've drawn our track line, the black line, which goes from East Midlands to the Fenland Airport. We've selected Melton Mowbray as a checkpoint en route. And then we've drawn a 10 degree drift line on either side of the track. We're now going to measure the distance. And I'll make the notes on the chart just to, uh, as an aid memoir. So our total distance en route there is 48 nautical miles. So I'll just write that down here to remind us. 48. We'll also have a look at how far it is to go to that first checkpoint. And I make Melton Mowbray. Now I'm going to actually use a different part of the scale because uh, unfortunately, Part of my route has gone missing. So that's uh, 16 miles down route. So I'll just put 16 there. Now those figures are going to be useful in the actual planning later on. We have one more stage to do, well, actually two more stages. Very importantly, we want to know the actual track. So we'll take our protractor. Now, on a short leg like this, it's less critical. But on longer legs, it is important that we measure the track from approximately the middle of the line. Um, so we'll centre the dot up there. And what we want to do is parallel these graticles, these lines, with the lines on the protractor. So, centre it up, the lines are running parallel, and then we can read off the track. This is a true track, which gives us 0, 9, 7. So I'll just write that down here to remind me of that. 0, 9, 7, true. The last stage that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little box, a curious looking box. All will become clearer as we go on. And I'm going to put it down here, out of the way. So there we go. That's one leg of that route marked up on the chart. In the next video, I'll take you through how we now use that information to get a leg onto our pilot's plog and I'll see you soon. Thanks for listening and take care.